Hi everybody, Jessica Hazeman here, and today I'm going to tell you how to stay digitally organized. So I use a few different avenues to stay digitally organized, but there's a few rules that apply to all of them. One is to make sure you clearly label everything. No matter what it is, make sure you label it clearly so you don't even have to open up that file before knowing what it is. In addition to that, use folders. Folders are your friend. Folders keep things organized. Folders keep like things next to each other. Folders make things easy to find. And as well as that, make sure you're cleaning up often. I do a daily digital clean, which I talk about on my social media, and it's super important for maintaining a clean digital environment. However, I also do a deep digital clean once a month that's part of my monthly cleaning, and that is when I would go through my Google Drive or I go through my desktop and I make sure everything is where it's supposed to be, everything is labeled clearly, and I get rid of all that garbage and all that clutter. So to start off by talking about the different places that I stay organized, I'm going to start with my desktop. This is my desktop. It's a picture of my husband and I on our wedding day and I absolutely love it. I love how clean the desktop is, I love that I'm not overwhelmed by a bunch of files, and I love that there's not a million applications on the bottom. So these are my two tips for you. One, make sure you keep your doc organized. Get rid of applications that you're not using, that you've never used. Put only your frequently used apps down here at the bottom. When you're not using an app, make sure you go ahead and quit that program so it's not running in the background. Here, if you right click and go to options, you can remove it, from doc, remove it from the dock if it's not an application that you use frequently. If it is, leave it there. You want easy access to the applications that you use frequently. You just don't need all the clutter. Now, I also don't have any documents on here. That isn't totally rare, but right now I'm just not working on anything, so I really don't need any type of document on my desktop. If I am working on a project, I do create a folder for it. So if I were to be working on researching for taxes and I'm saving information and I'm saving receipts and whatever I'm going to save for my taxes, I could create a folder for it. And anything that I do save to my desktop, I would move here into this folder. The key to this folder is that eventually it's either going to get moved to my hard drive or it's going to get uploaded to my Google Drive. Sometimes I just like to have it on my desktop when I am working on something. Maybe I don't want to lug my hard drive around, or maybe I don't want to upload it to Google Drive. There's always a reason why, and it's really easy to save things to your desktop. So I do like having folders that I'm spending a lot of time working on saved to my desktop, but I do always move them and make sure to put them in a home. Sometimes I work on a big project and then I don't need any of this folder and I move it to the trash can. That's okay too. It's just my current project and I can do whatever I want with it. When I do move something to, something to the trash can, I make sure to empty the trash, a good way to save storage, and again, get rid of that clutter. That's how I keep my digital or my desktop digitally clean. It's pretty easy because I basically just don't put a lot on it and that's how to keep it, that's how I keep it clean. Another way that I keep my digital life clean and also go a little bit paperless is using email. Now, I could go on forever about email. I'm referring to my blog post on my website titled Nine Steps to Complete Digital Organization because I really like how I laid out my email and how I use that to organize files. So. In this blog post, I talk about why I have more than one email account and what I use them for. One of the accounts I have is a joint personal account that I share with my husband for all personal communication with our family. My husband is not the best at checking his email, so we go ahead and share that, making sure that we both know what's going on for events and that type of thing. We also get our bills and utilities and that type of thing to our personal email. I then have a professional email for interpreting because I'm self-employed. All of my invoices get sent through there, my correspondence with the agencies, my contracts, any type of relation to interpreting. My husband also has a professional email for his business. And then I also have a, an email for my website, my blog, my Instagram, any type of social correspondence goes through a separate email. 
The most important email that we have is this email for junk email in which we sign up for subscriptions, we sign up at stores and websites and all of those types of places, we use our junk emails, which I talk about in this post more, but I wanted to emphasize that we use a, an entire different provider. All of my other emails are Gmail, and this other um, scam account is what I call it, or junk account, is a Yahoo account. So what I like about that is that it's two different apps on my phone, and when I'm actually checking my important email, I'm not overwhelmed by the junk that comes in on my Yahoo email. I actually don't check my Yahoo email unless I'm searching for a specific coupon or something like that. The reason that I'm explaining the types of emails that I have is because in relation to all of the emails, I also have different Google Drive accounts, which helps me stay very organized. But I'm gonna go into Google Drive after I quickly show you a little bit about how I keep my Gmail nice and clean and how I use it to store files. So an important thing that I'd like to know is I always keep my inbox empty. I go through it every single day. It's part of my daily digital routine, which I talk about a lot on social media, but I keep it empty because I use folders. And here on the left-hand side, you can see the folders that I've made. Any type of email that I get to my personal, our joint personal account, any type of email that I get has a folder. To create a folder, you just scroll down to the bottom and you can click create new label is what it's called. And you can enter the name of the label and as well as you could put the label under something. So if it's a subcategory of another folder, you can have those as well. So for example, we send all of our utilities, we sign up for paperless and they get sent, in, sent here and all of our utilities are stored in our utility folder, which is actually a subfolder of our home folder, any type of um, correspondence about our home that we are renting goes into this home. A good example of my next point is in our medical. If I get something mailed to me or we have some type of document that I don't want stored physically and I don't want a physical copy of it, I go ahead and I take a picture of it and I email it to myself clearly stating what it is, putting a clear label on what it is. So as you can see, we got DEXA scans, and you can I can find my DEXA scan very easily because I emailed it to myself, I labeled it, so it's very clearly labeled, and it's also clearly nested in this folder called medical. Um, what I like about that is I could just type in DEXA scan, and it will pull it up for me because I labeled it so clearly. That's how I use Gmail. I um, had a good question from one of my friends about why I don't store all of these documents and photos in Google Drive. And the reason is because we are signed up for paperless. We do get most of our bills, most of our correspondence with these places through email. So I like to just have um, these email folders set up so that I don't also have to save all of this and then save it to my drive. It's just easy to keep it in my email. So again, this is our joint personal email account that this is what our um, folders look like. And I also have folders in every single email account that we have. Now that we're done with email, um, we are gonna go ahead and talk about Google. And I love Google so much. I love that it just goes through all of my devices. Everything is saved, whether it's on my iPad, my computer, my phone, or my desktop. Um, I love that it's just so seamless and works so well. So before I get into storing um, documents and files, I wanted to point out my favorite thing about Google is that it does just make things so much easier. And one of the ways that I use Google to make my life incredibly easy is to bookmark things. And up here are my bookmarks. I have folders for each um, each thing that I bookmark. For example, my wedding bookmark has the links to all of our wedding photos. So our proposal, our engagement photos, and our wedding photos. Um, it has links to the websites, which makes it very easy to find, as well as links to my frequently used interpreting websites and my um, financial websites. All of those are easily stored in these bookmarks, and they're clean, clear, and organized as well. To edit your bookmarks, you go up to the top right corner of your screen, you'll see these three dots, and then you just click on bookmarks and click on bookmark manager. And this screen will pop up in which you can go ahead and alter the order. You can um, make 
make folders as well as put things into folders um, just by clicking and dragging. And that's the way that you can um, get this bookmark just looking amazing. And those bookmarks being nice, clean, and organized really help <laughs> in, in the big scheme of things. Very, They're very helpful. So I wanted to touch on that, but I also want to touch on Google Photos. Um, part of being digitally organized is making sure your photos are organized. I use Google Photos. I actually have an entire video on how I use Google Photos on my YouTube channel. So go ahead and check that out. Um, just click right here and you will be able to watch that next. Um, and so I'm not going to go into depth of how I use Google Photos to store um, my photos, but I am going to go into a great depth of how I use Google Drive. So repeating once again, I have multiple Google Drives because I have multiple different Gmails and I have multiple different categories of my life. I have a Google Drive for my personal account. This is all my personal information, my personal stuff. My husband has an account for his clients, his business, his anything business related is in his Google Drive. I also have an interpreting Google Drive for anything related to interpreting. So part of being organized is having these different um, Gmails, having these different drives allows me to keep things completely separate. If I'm looking for tax information um, related to my interpreting, it's it's here. It's housed in my interpreting Gmail and in my interpreting drive. I would never have to go to my husband's business account to be able to find that, um, which it just makes things that much clearer. I use the Google Drives as a big giant folder. So inside my big giant folders, I keep things organized by using folders. Um, this is our joint personal account and we don't store much here. Um, we, like I said, we use Gmail a lot for most of our per personal stuff, but I do have my current things that I'm working on. This is usually like things that I'm legitimately working on right now. Eventually they'll get deleted or they will get moved, but they're my current projects. Um, we also have personal things stored in um, folders inside of here. And then I keep my frequently, frequently used um, spreadsheets right on the front. So I have our Hazeman budget, which is checked every single day. So I need easy access to it. So I don't even put it into a folder. I just keep it clearly labeled on my main page. Um, we also have a bucket list. This is places we're actually working on this now to create places that we want to go, um, figuring out vacations and that type of stuff. We have an address book. Again, something that I want easy access to if I need someone's email, if I need someone's address, I want to just be able to click on it and go to the address book. And then I also have an accounts page, which I also have a blog post about. If you're interested, I keep all of my um, accounts, what my email related to an account is, and then I give myself a password hint. So I have all of that stored right on this front page. This is my personal, personal drive. However, in my husband's drive, he also uses folders. Um, obviously, you can tell that I set this up for him, but he uses folders and inside his folders are more folders until you get to the documents that relate to it. Um, for example, he has a personal folder and in it he has all of his documents clearly labeled. Um, I would like to emphasize my husband struggles with this much more than I do. I am usually the one that um, I one day a month I go into his drive and make sure to clean it up a bit because he has a, a harder time remembering to clearly label it or clearly put it into a folder. So I do that for him and then I make it so it's very easy for him to find. He knows just to go into his personal account and look for it and look for whatever document he was working on. So that is how we use Google Drive to keep his business side of things completely organized. And then I also use, this is just another example of how I keep things organized inside of my interpreting account. It's just another way, another big folder being interpreting Google Drive and then inside of it is all of the things related to my interpreting life. So that is how I use Google Drive to keep things organized. And it's going to sound vaguely familiar that when I open my hard drive, um, I have an external hard drive that I keep things on, and in it I have more folders and more clearly labeled things. So in it, 
I have a personal option because that is where I store most of the stuff. Um, I have everything clearly labeled. Um, I, we keep important photos on here. Inside the photos, we also have things clearly labeled. So if we're looking for a photo, we can just type it in and find it. But also when we're looking through them, we're able to find them. As well as I keep all of the important documents and videos and photos from my um, husband's business on here because they are important. I want them backed up on our hard drive. We don't back up a lot because we don't need to. We have access to it on Google Drive and most of it is if something crazy were to happen, not a tragedy if we were, were to lose it. Um, so we only back up the things that we really, really need. My um, hard drive is clearly labeled. The things in it are clearly labeled um, and they all have a home. So over the course of everything, my again, if you are trying to become digitally organized, make sure that everything is clearly labeled in a home, in a folder, and that you clean up often. I think that it becomes daunting to do things when they take an entire day. So set aside a little bit of time every so often to be able to clean it up so it doesn't get out of hand. Um, again, a little bit of, of a summary. I keep my desktop clean. I use email folders to go paperless as well as um, get rid of that physical clutter in my home and store it digitally. I use Google Chrome. I use the bookmarks on Google Chrome to make sure to stay extra organized and make things easily accessible. But I also use Google Photos and Google Drives to store my photos and all of my documents. Everything is stored there and anything super important is backed up on my hard drive. But when it's backed up, it is also clearly labeled, housed in a nice little folder and super organized. So these are the things that work for me. They might not work um, perfectly for you. You might have um, some different preferences, but let me know if you have any questions. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel so you can get all of the content. Um, if you're looking for more, head to my blog. I have a lot of information. This um, digital organization, uh, Nine Steps to Complete Digital Organization, is a great read. It has literally everything listed out on what I do and why I do it. And it is very helpful if you're trying to become digitally organized. So. Thanks again so much. Bye.